my name is Afia Hagen. I'm from the British Blacklist and I'm here with Rain, Alan Miller to interview her about your brand new film, Rylane. Rain, it's great to see you. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm really well, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I have to say, I absolutely loved the film. I loved it. I loved it. I laughed. I laughed till I cried. And then I cried. Aww. Just absolutely brilliant. And thank it's described described as not quite a rom-com. How did you come up with the idea for Riley? Well, I actually got sent the script, you know, I got, um, and it's odd because I originally was like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to direct my first film that I haven't written, but I got sent the script and I read it on the train and embarrassed myself laughing out loud in front of loads of people, um, <laughs> which I was kind of like, okay, this is a sign. Let me see, let me see what these, you know, what these writers are saying. And um, I had quite strong opinions on like where it would be set. Um, I wanted mm. to set it in, it was originally written in Camden. Um, and so I really felt that, you know, a story where you have two people walking around needed to be set somewhere um, like South London, because I'm obsessed with South London, as I'm sure you can tell. Um, but yeah, it's what what attracted me to it was that it was just a really simple story about two people wandering around having a nice day. And I think it's such a great kind of canvas for a director that wants to build worlds and, you know, work on characters and have fun, like, you know, using my craft to kind of tell this, this story. How did you know that David and Vivian were your Yaz and Dom, that they were perfect to be the vehicles for this story? Um, I, It's hard to say how I know. I think it just happened. Like, you know, we met loads of incredible actors who, you know, I'd love to meet again. But as soon as Vivian walked in the room, as soon as David walked in the room, there was a connection between us, you know, I think their kind of instincts are similar to mine and we have a similar sense of humour, um, but their performances were just perfect for the, for the roles. Um, and, you know, and that was them separately. You know, I kind of already thought, yes, when, when I met them on their own, but then when we put them together, it was incredible. You know, you're very... Peng? Refreshingly disarming. You ask a lot of questions. I'm interested in people's messes. What makes you think I've got a mess? Everyone has a mess. Okay. And their dialogue feels so authentic, so real. And um, how much of that was improvised and how much of that um was in the script? Were you quite strict or did you did you allow them to sort of build around it and bring their own to it? I definitely allowed them to bring their own to it. Um, you know, I think Viv and David have they're really good. Well, we worked collaboratively, you know, and when we were rehearsing, I wanted to make sure that every word that they said they felt comfortable with. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of improvisation, um, but there's also a lot of stuff in there that was already really good, you know? So, um, yeah, I definitely think it's important to give actors the space to ask questions and challenge and play. Um, and, and, we, and we did that a lot. You talked about playing there. Like, what was your favourite moment on set? Ooh, that's a really hard question. I think my favourite moment on set was probably when we shot in Brixton Market, mainly because it's probably one of the most important places for me in my life, and it felt really special to be able to capture it for a film, you know, especially as it's somewhere that's kind of changing constantly. Um, so, you know shooting that was a really special thing for me but also it was a moment you know that scene takes place when they're wandering through the market it's just after the restaurant you know where they've actually just kind of had a great moment together and they're being silly and they're warming up and so the characters are sort of you know we're kind of on this exciting journey with them from that point so I'd say like I can't give you a favorite scene but that was definitely a really special scene to shoot. You talked about Brixton Market. It's filmed in South London. And it definitely feels like um, Peckham and South London is like the third main character in the film. What was it like shooting in Peckham, Brixton Market and all these really iconic places? It was incredible, you know. It was really important that um, we shot it there. It's a very special place. And I think it's also a place that isn't really 
represented or is ever really shown in a very in a, in a sort of positive way. I think it's really important to point out that like, you know, growing up in South London, I moved to London when I was 12 um, and lived in Brixton and Peckham. And it's not always an easy place to live and it's not always a super happy place. But this film is about that place on a good day. Um, and, you know, it was really important for me to show that there are good days in South London and that it is a really nice place to be sometimes. Um, so, yeah, it was it was an honor to shoot there. And I think the community <laughs> was definitely intrigued about what we were shooting. We had a few people come over saying, oh, you shoot in EastEnders. And when we said no, they were really disappointed. So that was a funny moment. <laughs> <laughs> but was there any challenges? to shooting in South London was there any challenges on set that you came across no I well I think the only challenges are ones that you'd have anywhere particularly because it was COVID and um it was sorry it was the pandemic so you know when we were shooting on these really wide lenses we were obviously having people walk by in the background and the moment that we saw a mask I had to cut because we didn't want it to you know we didn't want to have masks in the film, obviously. So that was really tricky. And obviously the trickiness of sort of keeping masks on and directing with a mask, by the way, is really hard. Um, having to have tests every every other day. And, you know, that process was difficult. But in many ways, it kind of made us all feel more connected and closer. And, you know, obviously the pandemic put everything into perspective for everyone um mm -hmm. and and it was a real privilege to be able to work at that time to be honest but i'd say that the, the pandemic was probably the biggest challenge there's some really um really fun cameos in the film you've got like levi roots you've got colin Farr, all these incredible people and um, how did you get them or how did you drum up all the support and get them to to sign up to to be part of rye lane well, some of them, you know, we asked and they were they were pretty they were quite into the idea, which was which was great. Um, specifically, Colin, I wrote him a letter. You know, I wanted to kind of nod to the fact that, like, I knew that when the film came out, whatever happens, people are going to make comparisons, aren't they, to other British rom-coms. And so for me, I kind of wanted to just do a little cheeky wink, you know, to to them because actually this is the complete opposite of those rom-coms and it was great to have him in it to play a part that was actually really small you know when he's normally such a big a big part it was it felt it felt right and he was he was awesome <laughs> rain thank you so very much thank you thank you boom <laughs> could see out and about again don i could see out and about i started pilates is it are oh, you an artist? Oh, no. I'm an accountant. Boring! You know you're very... Peng? Refreshingly disarming? You ask a little question. I'm interested in people's messes. What makes you think I've got a mess? Everyone has a mess. You weren't about to bring up Eric and Gia, nah? Be cool. So go on, spill the tea. What happened? She cheated on me with my best friend. Wait, is that... <laughs> No, no, I need to figure this out because it's baffling. You dumped this funny, clever, successful accountant for this jobless human bin fire. <laughs> My work precedes me. <laughs> I went through the same sort of thing. Apparently, she opened his mind and then her legs. I'm done with all this toxic energy. What is she doing here, Julian? Stealing your phones, apparently. <laughs> Why would I do anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Auntie. <laughs> You're probably into her. Yes! <laughs> 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 that's got to be hands down the greatest hookup story of all time. <laughs>